Much has been said about the murder of Wendy and Harold Peterson, the disappearance of their son, Daniel, and the arrest of Harold's brother, Greg Peterson. Some consider it an open and shut case of a robbery gone wrong. Others say Greg was jealous of the life his brother had. Many believe it was a fight that just got out of hand. And then there are those who believe that what happened that night was something else entirely, something not so easy to explain. For that story, we need to look at the journals of Daniel Peterson. Most of what he wrote seems to be the result of an overactive imagination. Perhaps there is more truth to these child stories than the ones we accept as fact. But we will let you be the judge. Harold and Wendy Peterson were well known and well liked in the community. Harold was a very successful insurance agent and many people in the community thought he was going to win his election for school board. Wendy was very involved with the Cates Crossing Catholic Church, as well many other local charities. Teachers said Daniel Peterson was a very shy, creative, and an incredibly sweet child. He didn't have many friends and preferred to spend his lunches in the library. Daniel was also a victim of bullying. Despite his complaints, little was done. The administration's lax approach is what led Harold to run for school board. September 8th. Today was another bad day. Jake and his idiot friends ambushed me in the bathroom. Again. They gave me another swirly. Now everyone is calling me Poo Poo Hair. I wish they'd leave me alone. I should tell Dad, but I hate the way he looks at me when I do. It's like he's ashamed that I can't defend myself. When he asked me how my day was, I just told him it was good. I did get the highest grade on the math test. I just made sure I showered before he got home. Uncle Greg showed up at dinner. I like Uncle Greg. He's so much more fun than Dad. I don't know why Dad calls him a hopeless bum. The good news, he's going to be staying with us for a few weeks. Best part is Dad will be focused on him and not me for a change. September 8th continued. Dad hammered Uncle Greg. I've never seen someone take so much abuse. I think he almost cried. Everybody went to bed not long after. That's when things got kind of weird. Sometime around midnight, I heard something wandering around the kitchen. I went to check it out, but no one was there. The front door was open, though. I found Uncle Greg standing in the front yard, just staring at the sky.
I really didn't know what to do, so I tried talking to him. I didn't want to ask Dad for help. I asked him what he was looking at. He didn't reply. He just pointed at the stars. I eventually got him back to his room. He didn't say anything until I got him back in bed. He looked at me and he was very scared. He said, they've come back. I asked what came back. You'll see, he replied before passing out. Why does this crap happen on a school night? Oh well, I have bigger problems to worry about. I need to figure out how to get through the day without ending up face first in the toilet. Again. September 9th. I asked Uncle Greg what he was looking at last night. I kind of got the sense he had no idea what I was talking about, though. When Harold started pulling in front of incumbent Mike Singer, the race for school board became incredibly nasty. Singer had been on the board for the last decade and was generally liked. So it was a surprise to see so many voters give their support to the challenger. Neither were above making political digs on the other. And on several occasions, the two candidates nearly came to blows. The most known of the two was a shouting match in the middle of the Burger Shack's lunch crowd. The race for the Cates Crossing School Board had never been so exciting. September 15th. Unfortunately, I think poo poo hair is permanent. Great. It'll probably end up on my tombstone. They even made up a song for me. He's got poo in his hair. It stinks and he doesn't care. So hold your nose when Daniel's near or he'll bring your eyes a tear because he's got poo in his hair. Not gonna lie, it's catchy when a group sings it. I hate it here. I wish dad would lose the election. Maybe we'd move somewhere better, like anywhere on earth. I'd even settle for someplace off world too. Uncle Greg is still sleepwalking. Every night I find him staring at the sky. I still have no idea what he's looking at. I've even found him out there in the rain. Dealing with him makes the mornings pretty hard makes class a little harder than I'd like. Thankfully, Dad's been focused on campaigning. Most of the time, he's talking to people, putting signs on roads and whatever else. Mom's usually with him, so it's mostly Uncle Greg and me. Really, it's just me. Uncle Greg just stares at the television. Dad yelled at him last night because of it. 
dad really is loud when he wants to be. <sighs> Typical dad. Though the louder he gets, the more I think he cares. Mom says he has problems expressing himself. September 17th. Well, today was a weird one. I found Uncle Greg talking to the TV. Just had static on the screen. Weird. I asked him who he was talking to. He got mad at me because I couldn't hear it. He grabbed me, said the voices were telling him to do things. Do things he didn't want to do. Eventually went back to watching TV. I think Uncle Greg had a nervous breakdown or something. September 18th. I had to jot this down the moment I woke up or I might have forgotten about it. Last night I had this weird dream, but it didn't feel like a dream. It was so clear, like a memory. It happened around midnight, I think. It started with a low hum. It got louder and louder until this bright red light blasted through the window. And that's when he appeared. At first I thought, oh my God, Peter Pan is in my bedroom. He was floating there, he was green. Peter Pan was an alien. He had no mouth I could see but I could hear him speaking to me. Some of it felt like words, but mostly I remember images, confusing but intense images. The following images are in the order in which Daniel arranged them.
and then he left. That morning, Uncle Greg woke me up. There was a weird glow in his eyes. He smiled, told me, now you see them too. Teachers were usually quite fond of Daniel. They often called him the ideal student. He was well-mannered and his grades were consistently the highest in his class. However, Daniel had trouble fitting in with other children since the beginning of his education. He was never interested in the same things that his peers were, and Daniel often felt more comfortable around adults. September 19th. Thank God it's Saturday. Or at least it would be if I didn't have to help Dad campaigning. Putting up signs doesn't bother me, but I'd rather not be paraded around as some sort of lost cause. Defending your kids as if they were my own. Can you guess how he came up with that one? At least it did get my mind off last night. It was hard not to obsess over it. Strange, it didn't scare me. Everything scares me, but Peter didn't. I could tell that it cared for me. It wanted my friendship, I think. It was like it was family, like a long lost cousin, maybe. right too. I was understanding the images better. Peter wanted me to come with them. Where? I have no idea. But definitely away from here. Can't lie. Sounds like a big plus to me. It was clear that they did something to Uncle Greg, Dad, and me. That's why I don't fit in with other kids. I'm not like other kids. I'm something else. Part of me must be like Peter. Honestly, it's kind of a relief. At least I have a reason to feel so alien. If I stay, I would have a chance at a normal life. But do I even want that? Would I ever want that? Maybe not. I don't want to hurt my parents. But why? Were we just experiments? Why was Dad and me considered a success and Uncle Greg a failure? Poor Uncle Greg. Even the aliens give him a hard time. 
And what about mom? Did they experiment on her too? If so, what did they do to her? If not, why? And then there's the danger. I don't think they understand what's going on between Mr. Singer and Dad. I can see why they would think it was a dangerous situation. Earlier today, we saw Mr. Singer tossing some of Dad's campaign signs into the woods. Dad, of course, exploded. He follows him into the burger shack, screaming loud, very loud. Dad called him a lot of ugly things that can be found in the dictionary. To his credit, Singer just laughed it off. That's when Dad pulled him close. Earl mentioned something about the Dunnington Construction Company. I couldn't understand anything except something about exposing it. Whatever, this sounds stupid. That set Mr. Singer off. It's kind of embarrassing to watch. But if you did see it, I'm sure you thought they were going to kill each other. September 20th. I waited all night for Peter to come, but never did. September 21st, nothing to report. Still nothing from the aliens. September 22nd, nope. September 23rd, maybe he's not coming back. September 24th, no alien, but today was a big one. I don't know if I just had enough or if I was just tired, but when Jake pushed me today, I just snapped. I hit him. I never hit anybody before, but I finally hit him. I broke his nose. I even cracked one of his ribs. He tried to fight back, but he moved so slowly. It was easy. It really surprised me. Why did I wait so long to stand up for myself? One of the kids finally pulled me off. That was the first time I really saw what I did. Jake was crying, his face was covered in blood. Lots of blood. I just knew Dad was going to be proud of me. I got suspended for three days. Doesn't seem fair. I suffer for months and nothing happens. But the moment I defended myself, I get suspended. I hate this place so much. So what if he had to go to the hospital? Maybe next time he'll think twice before giving someone a swirly. Well, Dad, he was anything but proud. Angry, mad, hot-headed, insane, crazy. Those words probably described him a lot better. He said I may have ruined his chances at school board. Wow. Thanks, Dad. Glad to know where I rank. And Mom, she was no better. The only thing she cared about was the hospital bills. I guess it was better for everybody when I was bullied. That night, Peter came back. I have questions.
So basically, Peter asked me to choose between my Earth family and my newly discovered alien one. After the awful day I had, only one choice made sense. I chose the one that wanted me. I chose Peter. He replied with a bright red light. It struck me in the forehead. My head was flooded with so many things. I couldn't process everything. It was just too much. Uncle Greg burst into my room. He swung a bat at Peter. Green blood splattered across the wall. I think Peter died instantly. Last thing I remembered before I blacked out was Uncle Greg. He was glaring at me. I've never been scared of Uncle Greg before. And after what he did to Peter, I really thought he was going to kill me. Even though I was unconscious, my mind was still receiving images. I saw things I could never dream of, and different viewpoints of things I thought I understood. It was both amazing and terrifying. I saw why they considered Uncle Greg a failure. His DNA didn't meld with theirs successfully. It caused him issues.
This may seem cruel, but Peter's people are far from cruel. They are beyond war, greed, indifference. Us. They tried to repair their mistakes, but apparently it didn't work. Uncle Greg just became more withdrawn, depressed, unpredictable. But he's still in tune with them. He can hear them speaking when they are near. And Dad, they asked Dad to go with them years ago. He chose to stay. Wow, I wouldn't be here if he decided to go. They wiped his mind so he wouldn't remember. And then they just waited for me. We're not the first. They have done this before, many, many times, and in many other families, other species, planets, and for thousands of years. It really is incredible. Basically, they're collectors. They look for qualities they like in other species and then add it to their own. It's how they choose to evolve. I can see why they are drawn to Kate's Crossing. They keep a close eye on it. I believe it's a prison for the first and last enemy. That's why this place sucks. Peter's death shocked them. They rarely die violently. I can still feel their loss, their hurt. Millions upon millions continue to mourn him. And that's when I woke up. Uncle Greg was standing over me. I figured this was the end. I thought the danger warning was about Mr. Singer, but now I think they were talking about Uncle Greg. I always thought he was harmless, but what he did to Peter wasn't harmless. Does that mean he's going to do the same thing to me if he finds out I'm one of them? The next day I was sick. Every muscle ached. Was I dying? I immediately noticed things were different. I could hear things I couldn't before. Thoughts? I knew things I should, things that shouldn't be possible. I was changing. Two more aliens came that night. They told me to say my goodbyes. 
and that they would return at the end of the year to retrieve me earlier if there was a problem. I immediately wondered if I made the right decision. I felt selfish for a moment, but just for a moment. The things I would see and do were just impossible to pass up. And then they were gone. September 27th, home, in bed. I still feel awful, but I'm moving around. Parents aren't speaking to me. September 28th, second day of my five-day suspension. Mom had me doing chores. She didn't say much, but I could hear some of her thoughts. She was thinking about the vacation we would have to cancel due to Jake's hospital bills. Worth it. Day three, dusted the furniture. I noticed Uncle Greg has been watching me. Does he suspect something? I tried to read his mind, but I couldn't. We went to the grocery store after lunch. I couldn't read any stranger's mind either. I guess I need practice. September 30th, day four. More campaign with dad, fun. He didn't say much, but I heard him loud and clear. Last day of suspension. Rake the leaves in the morning, then back on the campaign trail with dad in the afternoon. We ran in singer again. He actually apologized to dad. It was shockingly nice, too nice. He even took us to a late lunch. I'm starting to think the reason it's easier to read my parents' minds is because they're my parents. But I was getting something from this guy. Every time he said something nice, it felt like an insult. The nicer he acted, the more it bothered me. But I kept trying, and then it happened. A stray thought from Mr. Singer's head popped into mine. It'll be all over soon. Something about that comment felt wrong. October 3rd, and just like that, everything was back to normal. Uncle Greg started acting normal. Mom took me to Blockbuster for movie night. Been a while since we did one of those. Dad apologized for making the fight about the election. A rare cool move from Dad. At dinner time, they even told me that they were proud that I finally stood up for myself. However, breaking Jake's ribs was a step too far. Fair enough. We can agree to disagree. For a brief moment, we were all kind of normal. It was nice, but it's easier to leave mad, much easier. 
But I know there's no going back on choosing Peter's people. I'm changing, and eventually the outside will match what's happening on the inside. I hope Dad wins the election. I hope Mom gets to travel more. I'm not sure if it's against the rules, but I'm going to come back and visit them. One way or another, I'm going to make sure they're okay. Even school was pleasant. The kids were actually friendly for once. Everybody was so amazed at what I did to Jake. They all gave me high fives in the lunchroom. I even got high fives from Jake's friends. Why did everyone wait until I decided to leave to be friends? I guess that's my fault. I shouldn't have let a bully scare me away from the world. October 5th, and just when I thought things were getting back to normal, Uncle Greg returned to his old ways. Uncle Greg lunged at me during breakfast. Why are they coming for you, he asked over and over. That forced him off of me. I'm surprised Mom didn't have a heart attack. They fought until Dad threw him out. Dad told him to leave or he'd call the cops. Uncle Greg started crying. I have to protect you. Don't you understand? I have to protect you now. He repeated himself until finally got in his truck and left. Later that night, we got a call that Uncle Greg was making a scene at a bar. Sounded like he was pretty drunk. They called the cops and threw him in jail as a favor to dad. Politics. They said he'd be out in the morning. Poor Uncle Greg. October 6th. Great day. For me, at least. Dad tried to have a talk with Uncle Greg at the burger shack. It didn't go well. Uncle Greg yelled at Dad, told him that he didn't understand what was going on. He apparently told Dad that the black-eyed kids, they saw his kids were real, and that I might be one of them. Dad, of course, didn't believe any of it, but I could tell he was shaken. Uncle Greg is his brother, after all. Dad confessed that he hadn't thought about those nightmares in years. I asked him what made them so scary. He just shook his head and told me to forget about it. But I could see in his head. He remembers the experiments. Pieces. But he remembers. October 7th. More campaigning. I noticed a green spot on my back. I guess my true self is revealing itself. Last night, I saw Uncle Greg staring at the house. He was far away and at the foot of the driveway. But that was him glaring in my direction. It's like he's waiting on something. Probably me. Or my new family. Creepy. But I could hear a thought in the distance. Protection. October 7th continued. I woke to find Uncle Greg standing over me. He broke in. 
He grabbed me by the hand and yanked me out of the room. He wrapped my face in tape before I could scream. And I fought and fought, but we were outside the house before I knew it. He tossed me into the bed of his truck and whispered to me that he was going to keep me safe. I never felt more afraid. In my mind, I screamed for him to stop. And then he did. I demanded he untie me. He did. It was weird. For a second, he was like a toy. I told him to leave, and he did. I could feel his confusion, but I told him everything was okay. He didn't need to come back, and in his mind he agreed. I think he was relieved. October 8th, Peter's people came back early. I have to go. I cried, I protested, but they said something was wrong. I told them I didn't think Uncle Greg was gonna hurt me, but they said Uncle Greg wasn't the concern. I can see their thoughts. Danger. It's not Uncle Greg, but I felt it before. I asked to warn my parents, but they tell me it's already too late. I heard something. Was that a gun? That was the last journal entry from Daniel Peterson. Nothing about October 8th appeared unusual. Wendy spent most of the day running errands and helping the church. Harold met several clients that morning, then campaigned for school board the rest of the afternoon. Even Daniel reportedly had a quiet day. Greg Peterson spent the day visiting the many bars of downtown Cades Crossing. No one reported on being in any trouble. Later that night, Harold and Wendy Peterson were shot point-blank range with a shotgun. The coroner estimated that the time of death was about 2.30 a.m. The weapon, nor their son, have ever been found. Greg Peterson was found wandering the woods two days later. He claimed that the black-eyed children left him there as well took his nephew. Traces of Harold Peterson's blood were found on his clothes. During the trial, the defense filed a motion stating that Greg Peterson was not fit to stand trial. The motion failed. The defense went on to argue that the evidence was circumstantial. Greg Peterson was found guilty and given the death penalty. He was executed in 2002. And then the Peterson's sad story fell into the macabre history of Kate's Crossing leaving only the urban legend of otherworldly visitors. However, in 2019, the Peterson story resurfaced. Mike Singer, now retired, reportedly called the police and told them that he saw Daniel Peterson. He was grown, but not human. His skin looked green and his eyes appeared black. He told the police, Daniel knows, and he's come back for me. When the police investigated, they found Mr. Singer had hung himself in his office. His now famous suicide note confessed to hiring a pair of thugs to murder the Petersons. He went on to explain that he was blackmailed by the now infamous Dunnington Construction, and he needed to be in a position to approve their bids for new school projects. He concluded his note with beware, the children with black eyes.